Hey, what is up, guys? So, Happy Cruise here, back at you with another epic video. Uh, so, yeah, I was actually on Screen Rant uh, Gaming here, and uh, I came across this article, which actually caught my eye, because apparently the PS5, the Xbox Series X, will likely be delayed, according to a new report. It looks as if impact from the uh, coronavirus pandemic will likely cause delays in the development and production of next-generation game consoles. This was actually today, so let's go ahead and get into it. By Christopher Tauton. Anyway, so according to a new report, it's very likely that either the PS5 or the Xbox Series X, or both, will be delayed thanks to the impact of the COVID-19 coronavirus. Recently named a global pandemic by the World Health Organization, the coronavirus has caused the slowdown of, and in many cases, the complete halt of multiple industries and functions around the globe. From the closure of Disney theme parks to the dozens of movies and television shows which have stopped production, the effects of the coronavirus has not only endangered the lives of thousands, but also caused industry leaders across almost every sector of humanity to re-examine the ways they do business. From embracing remote work to planning for multiple months of no profit, the video game industry has been just as susceptible to these adjustments as everyone else, and has recently seen a rash of esport tournament cancellations thanks to fears surrounding spreading coronavirus. That's true. Um, you know, didn't they cancel like E3? They cancel, you know, some tournaments of Street Fighter Five and that kind of thing. And uh, yeah. Anyway, so now a new report from DFC Intelligence, thanks to WCCF Tech, has shed some light on how the coronavirus may affect the production and distribution of next-generation game consoles, and it's not good news. Oh boy, here we go. According to the DFC, a video game industry analyst and research firm with over 25 years of experience, both the PS5 and the Xbox Series X have a strong likelihood one or both systems will not make a 2020 launch. Oh god, that sucks. The information gets even worse for players from there, as the report goes on to state that if the systems do launch, supply will likely be constrained and initial pricing could be higher than expected. Uh oh, wow, wait a minute. Oh, boy. That ain't good. Anyway, so for fans already worried about how much the PS5 and Xbox Series X will cost, this is not good news. Even if the world stops worrying about the dangers of coronavirus tomorrow, the damage may have already been done, as a DFC report also says... Even if the situation clears up in a few weeks, the ability to manufacture and release a high-end new game system has already been severely impacted. As both systems are planned to release sometime during the holiday 2020 season, there isn't much time left left for things to go back to normal. Oh, God. The future of the entire entertainment industry, from movies to video games, as well as the health of thousands of people across the world, is currently uncertain. While some may bemoan the amount of delays, cancellations, and cautionary measures taken by governments and corporations worldwide, hopefully such, such actions will lead to a quicker, safer, and more stable recovery. Until the virus has run its course, or until a viable cure is found and distributed, everyone can only wash their hands, try not to touch their face, and wait. Video games have never been a better option, and although players may not be getting their hands on a PS5 or the Xbox Series X as soon as they had hoped, at least there are a ton of good titles available right now to get the occupy. That is true. That is true, and this whole, you know, coronavirus thing really does suck. It really does. And, uh, yeah, but hopefully, you know, you guys should keep yourself safe, that kind of thing. My viewers, random people, everybody, all right? So I also did find this article over here as well, actually, in regards to The Last of Us Part 2. The little Renata dog has been accused of crunch culture. Oh, boy. Now, wait a minute. So The Last of Us 2, this is actually March 12, by the way. The Last of Us 2 developer Naughty Dog is the latest to be accused of encouraging workplace crunch culture of obscenely long hours. Oh, boy. So a new report on the development of The Last of Us Part 2 indicated that Naughty Dog, the studio behind the game and its predecessor, might be problematically encouraging workplace crunch culture to get the game completed in time. Uh -huh. Even though the game has been delayed a bunch of times, by the way. Anyway, so crunch culture is a video game industry specific reference that describes the practice of developers working incredibly long extra hours in the build up to a title's release in order to ensure both its quality and that it meets, meets the target launch window. Crunch culture is something that has existed within the industry for a long time, but has recently come under fire after it was exposed just how brutal the practice can be. Rockstar Games was infamously the subject of a report on its own crunch practices, while development Red Dead Redemption 2, I actually remember hearing about that actually, and a game that apparently sometimes cost developers upwards of 100 hours of work a week to push out on time. Yikes. While many against the practice of crunch hope that exposing the details of it would make an impact, Red Dead Redemption 2 went on to sell extremely well and review even better. That's true. That was a good game. Good game, man. I love that. According to a report from uh, 
Jason Schreier Kotaku nodded out his music crunch culture and development process where a span of multiple games culminating in The Last of Us Part 2. That is correct. I heard they did that for Uncharted 3, Uncharted 4, Last of Us Part 1, and now Last of Us Part 2. Anyway, the report suggests that Naughty Dog is by no means a bad place to work and that many are happy with the way management treats them overall, but that there's a duality between that and the crunch time practices that don't outright tell employees to work over time, but essentially subtextually do. A former developer stated in the report that the implication is get the job done at all costs. Even though the studio provides food and encouragement to those working hard, hey, you know, pizza and uh, Coca-Cola, hell yeah. I'm, I'm good to go with that. So apparently crunch culture and Naughty Dog isn't even something the studio plays coy about, as the developer specifically looks for the kind of personalities that would want to work extra on something to ensure it's as close to perfect as possible. The report also details was described as a cycle of hires and departures where employees crunch hard until a game like The Last of Us Part 2 comes out, inevitably scoring well and during in bonuses at the release. Once the bonuses come in, they leave, leading to the studio needing to hire more junior developers who then stick it out until they experience the crunch themselves. This threat in response to the Shrier story highlights some developers indicating how brutal the sacrifice that studios can be when crunch time comes. And then, you know, we got some guys talking here from Twitter. Eh, whatever. So the report even states that some developers, even a few who still currently work at Naughty Dog, want The Last of Us Part 2 to fail, what the hell, in part because they hope it will prove that crunch culture doesn't produce results. Well, that seems unlikely given the pedigree of the studio and the rave review street stemming from preview events earlier. Perhaps it's time for consumers to seriously begin in interrogating how their favorite pieces of art are made. Crunch culture isn't going away, and it's possible it will need to be battled from outside by people paying for games or discussing them before serious changes can be made from within. Um, I do agree. Well, when it comes to the... Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. Like, when it comes to crunch culture, I mean, that sucks. Don't get me wrong. But at the end of the day, you know, these guys, you know, they are getting paid. You know, they're not working these extra hours for free. I understand. And, you know, um, The Last of Us Part 2, I am looking forward to that game. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. You know what I mean? You know, games are becoming, you know, bigger and more complex. So, you know, yeah, they need more people. They need more hours. They need more money. They need more this, more that. You know what I mean? So it's all part of the, uh, you know, it's just how it is. You know what I mean? In my opinion, you know? I, I mean, you know, do I feel bad for these guys? You know, they're working all those hours? Sure, I do. Oh, yeah. But at the end of the day, you know, that ain't free, man. If it, they were working for free, all those, uh, you know, 100, somebody said 100 hours, like, in a week, man, and it's like, oh, they didn't pay the, those hours for me. You know, they only paid, like, the, you know, they only paid, like, uh, like 40 hours, for example, out of those 100 hours. You know, that, that, that would suck. I would be like, oh, my God, wait a minute. That's wrong right there. But, you know, these guys, you know, on top of that, on top of that, it's actually optional, apparently. So, I don't know. I mean, you know, what do you guys think? All right. So I think that's it for this video. What do you guys think about the PS5, the Xbox Series is likely being delayed due to the coronavirus? Let me know. And also, what do you guys think about the, uh, you know, Last of Us Part 2, uh, you know, Naughty Dog being accused of uh, crunch culture? Um, and, you know, another thing I want to comment on real quick is that, you know, this crunch culture, I mean, yes, it does affect the developers. Obviously, you know, the guys, you know, you know, coding and that kind of thing, it does affect them. That's true, you know, obviously, you know, because they can become, you know, mentally exhausted, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, this doesn't actually affect the gamer that's paying like 60 bucks for the game, you know what I mean? So, I mean, what can a gamer do? Like, you know, is a gamer going to say, oh, man, you know, I do feel bad that this guy worked 100 hours a week to make Last of Us Part 2 for me. But it's then, and then it's like, oh, but the game is great. I'm loving it, you know what I mean? Like, who's going to say I'm not going to buy it? Because, you know, a, a developer, you know, spend 100 hours extra a week on, on a game or something like that. You know what I mean? That's the way I see it. I don't know about you guys. But anyway, let me go, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I appreciate it. Thank you. And also, don't forget to comment and subscribe for more epic videos. And hopefully, I'll see you guys tomorrow with another epic video. Later.